Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, thank you. So uh, what I'd like to talk about today is about the dark stuff in the universe. And also I'd like to give you four simple messages about that. But before getting into it, uh, I actually lived in the United States 14 years before I came back to Japan and worked at the University of Tokyo. And I felt very strange out there because I realized everyone is Japanese. And that's actually not right for a university where all kinds of people should work on all kinds of ideas on all kinds of subjects. So I had to actually change that. So after two years working at the University of Tokyo, I was actually very happy that I could make a difference there, that my institution, called Institute for the Physics and Mathematics of the Universe, now has 60% of the members coming from international. So I hope you agree that this is a small step, but in the right direction. So this is what I've been doing so far. Thank you, thank you. So a friend of mine in the United States asked me, so I don't see you very much these days, what have you been doing? And I told him, well, I became the director of the Institute for the Physics and Mathematics of the Universe, and he said, well, that's a too long a title, I can't remember that, so let me show them this to that. <laughs> and that sounded like a huge responsibility to me. But it turned out, back home, it's not a high enough authority, because my wife claims she's the voice of God, and I can't compete with that. But anyway, so what I would like to do at this institute is study the universe. And I'm sure you have this experience like a little kid watching up the sky and thinking about the universe and all kinds of questions will come up into your mind. It did to Gauguin too. You know, you kind of ask questions like, how did the universe begin? Does it have an end? What is it made of? How does it work? And why do we exist in it? And you may say, well, we know what the universe is made of. We learned that in school. Everything is made of atoms, right? It turned out it doesn't, and that's one of the things I'd like to talk about today. But by the way, you know, this kind of periodic table always gave me a headache because I, I couldn't memorize all the names of 100 elements, and I was bad in, in, in the lab. I actually made mistakes and burned things up and break things, and chemists look kind of nerdy to me too, and so I didn't quite get into chemistry, so it turned out the physics is the only thing I can get into. So that's what I did in the end. So one thing which I'd like to tell you today is that we've been through a kind of revolution in this field trying to understand the universe just since seven years ago. So if you change the universe into jelly beans and put them in a jar, it's going to look like this. Only 4% of the universe is made of atoms, and the 96 is some dark stuff we don't understand. 96% of the universe, we don't know what it is. We've been all wrong for like 100 years about the universe. We don't understand 96% of the universe. So that's my first message today. Dark exists. And this is a kind of sea change in our understanding of the universe that happened before. We used to think that we are the center of the universe, and then the center of the universe became the sun. But we know that's not true either, because we are sort of in a suburb in a Milky Way galaxy. And uh, this is actually a good thing, by the way, because in downtown, Populations aging, there are no stars and no life, but we are in a suburb where new stars are still being born and that created life for us, so that's actually a good thing. But now we have to change this picture all over again. Our galaxy is sort of a ball made up of dark matter, and just the stars are sprinkled inside. So this is actually a true picture of the galaxy the way I understand it now. So we have to, again, make a huge revolution in our understanding of the universe. So this is actually kind of dramatic picture about this. It looks a beautiful place to be. You might want to uh, step on a spaceship and go there and take a good, uh, good look. But you shouldn't do this because it's actually a very ugly place. What happened here is that two clusters of galaxies actually collided at a speed of 4,500 kilometers per second. Per second. And what's shown here in blue is actually where the dark matter is. And what's shown in red is atoms, the ordinary gas that became hot and, and radiates x-ray. The way we understand this picture is, is in this uh, computer animation that the cluster of galaxies is basically a cloud of dark matter, just a little bit of gas sprinkled in. And when they collide, the hot gas scattered against each other becomes very hot and gets friction and so lags behind. But dark matter just keeps going as if nothing has happened, so they're kind of like ghosts. And that's how we understand this beautiful picture, actually, so it's a very messy, ugly place. So dark matter is actually everywhere. It's holding things together. That's what they do. So if you think about all kinds of galaxies we got in the universe, and there are about a million of them in, in this picture, each little dot is a galaxy, we would naturally wonder 
How were they born? How were the stars born? How do we come to exist? So it turns out that dark matter is actually a good stuff. Because in a universe, in a computer simulation without dark matter, it stays sort of bland and boring, no galaxies, no stars, nothing. But in a universe with dark matter, you can see that dark matter starts to sort of get together by the gravitational pull, starts making more contrast, and that's where the bright spots are born, that's where the galaxies get born, stars get born, and eventually life. So it turns out that without dark matter, we wouldn't, be he we, would we wouldn't be here, so we actually need them in. So it's like invisible capital we just talked about, right? So we actually need that. A dark matter is the good stuff. So the second important message I'd like to give you today is dark matters. We don't see it, but it really matters. Well, it turns out that dark matter is only 23% of the universe. We got 4% in atoms, 23% dark matter, what's the rest? And that is called dark energy. And it's out there, it's everywhere, and it's doing something really strange. So you all know the universe is expanding, right? It's getting bigger and bigger. But the way the universe expands is actually speeding up. It's accelerating. And dark energy is causing this acceleration. It, it's ripping the universe apart. And I, I would say this is a kind of evil thing because if you look at this picture of beautiful galaxies out there, then they are being ripped apart by the, uh, the dark energy, so going farther and farther away, and eventually, we're not going to see them at all. So this is a kind of sad thing. So I would say the dark energy is an evil kind of dark stuff. And it took the scientists 80 years to just admit that there is this dark stuff in the universe we don't understand. We don't know what dark matter is. We don't know what dark energy is. But now that we have admitted that these things do exist in the universe, we came up with all kinds of strategy to do the new kind of projects and try to understand these things better. So this is a very surprising discovery. We don't understand 96% of the universe. Rest uh, is really a dark stuff, and we don't know what it is. So this is when I sort of learned something for my own life, I, I, in, in a way that's sort of uh, changing my own life. So when you encounter the dark stuff, you get afraid, you get scared, you feel powerless. It looks like you can do nothing about it. And it turns out the most important step for that is just to admit dark exists. That's my third message. And once you do admit the dark exists, there's something you can do about it. You can come up with a strategy to conquer the dark, right? So my fourth message, that's my last slide, is that once you know dark exists, and you learn dark actually matters, you got to admit that dark exists. Then you can do something about it, and don't be afraid of the dark. That's it. Thank you for your attention.